In a previous video, you saw me do a teardown of this old Coomber PA system. And in that video, I mentioned I was going to do a few upgrades to it. So this is the first part of those upgrades I'm going to do. There'll be two separate videos. The second part is going to involve some parts I'm going to have to order from AliExpress, so they'll take a while to arrive. So I'm going to do these, this upgrade today, and then down the line you'll see another video where I do the rest of the upgrades. So the first upgrade, or fix we're really going to do, is just install these two new batteries, because the old ones were completely dead. So these are a pair of 2.3 amp hour, 12 volt sealed lead acid batteries. They're the same sort of size as came out of it, but they're slightly higher capacity. The ones that came with it were 2 amp hour, these are 2.3. And these were fairly cheap from CPC, I think they're only about £10 each, something like that, so not too bad. So they're going to go in. But that's really just a fix, so now look at the actual upgrade I'm going to do, where I install this tweeter. So previously the sound quality was okay, but it didn't really work that well over like at high frequencies. So I'm going to add this tweeter in, which should be a decent upgrade. See so on the back, it's a Visaton DTW72. No idea how high quality this is, it's probably not amazing, but it was fairly cheap from CPC, so I'll be adding this in. So yeah, that's what the main thing we're doing today is. I'm also going to use a crossover for the tweeter. I don't know how strictly required it is, I am not an audio guy, but I thought I may as well use a crossover for a bit of fun, just again to learn about more stuff. So here it is. Um, obviously made it myself. Um, <laughs> I could have bought a pre-made one, but CPC didn't really have one in stock that was the right crossover frequency. And I thought, for a laugh, I'll make one. How hard can it be? So here it is. A couple of inductors there, a couple of big capacitors. Really pretty simple. See, it's all just made on some Vero board here. So yeah, I'll be adding that in. I've not tested it with the speaker properly, but I've tested it with an oscilloscope and signal generator and it seems to work properly, so that's pretty good. And it's fairly simple, so it was, I learned quite a bit doing it, so that's quite good fun. So yeah, I'll be adding this in. And then finally, for a couple of other miscellaneous bits, I'm going to add in this switch that I bought, which is a four-pole to four, four toggle switch. Don't know why that's hard to say, but yeah, four-pole toggle switch. And I'll be installing this on the back panel, and I'll be using this just for a laugh, really to switch between the new speaker setup with the tweeter and the main speaker and just to switch the new speaker off and just only have the original so you can sort of see the sound difference improvement I thought I'd just add that in for a bit of fun so that's going in and then because I'm mounting stuff to the back panel I've bought these li literally 20 pin ATX power connectors the idea is, is that I'll use these on, on the cables that go between the back panel and the main internals of the machine so I can disconnect them so I can easily remove the back without having cables sort of attached to it and the reason I picked pick these is because they're fairly cheap, well, cheap by Maplin standards, and they have a, lot, a decent number of connectors, because although right now I only have a few cables going to that switch, when I install the next set of upgrades, there will be more components mounted to the back panel, so I'll need more connections, so this seems like a sensible option. And yeah, it was relatively reasonably priced and easy enough to wire up. So yeah, let's get on with the upgrades. So the first thing we'll do is install the tweeter which is going to be a bit fiddly because we're going to have to remove this entire front panel including the grill and the wood behind it to be able to draw, drill a hole through to mount this tweeter. Unfortunately the screws for that are hidden behind all the board and the cassette mechanism so all that's going to have to come out again. I'm not going to bother showing all that on video just because it's going to take ages and I don't want this video to be a 50 minute one like the last one. Um, so I'll take the bits out that you've seen taken out before so if you want to see it taken apart go and watch the teardown and then once I get those bits out and I'm ready to remove the front panel I'll come back. Okay, so I've now torn it down to the level that we've seen before, where the amplifier has been removed along with the cassette mechanism. And it's all just piled over here very haphazardly because they're all soldered to each other. So yeah, hopefully all that will be fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove the speaker and the transformer from this front panel, and that will allow us to remove the front panel completely out of the machine without any components attached to it. So the transformer is held with a couple of screws on either side, hopefully they'll come out fairly easily. Then that speaker will come out as well. My only concern here is that I think they're held in self-tapping screws. I don't think the transformer isn't, but the speaker is. So my concern is if I start taking them out, how easy they'll be to go back in. But I imagine it'll be fine. So, and also once I've removed these components, I'll be able to actually move the boards a bit further away from the machine because the wires won't be as tight. Just there. Okay, so that's transformer now removed, hopefully. Not, okay, what's it stuck on? Or it, okay, it's literally stuck down with age. Okay, so that's now removed. That's quite heavy. So that can hopefully lift it outside the machine there. And then I can hopefully move the boards a bit further away, so that's a bit better. And now all I need to do is remove the main speaker. So, there's four screws on here. And once that's out, we can start removing this main front panel. Yeah, these are self tapping screws. Ah, that's a pain. Um, 
and the screws under that battery charging board. And maybe squeeze in the side. Let's see. Yeah, I'm very careful. Just about fit that down to the battery charging board. That was almost a annoying thing there if I had to remove that, but yep. That's all those screws out, so hopefully I can now remove the main speaker. So yep, that's loose. So shift the aerial up and that will yeah, it just pops out, there we go. So that's the full range driver this Coomber came with, we didn't see that before. Yeah, so there's all that thing in the middle of for the, oh, effectively the tweeter it has built in. It's not amazing quality, is it? But it works. Um, that wire's a bit slack, I'm actually just going to desolder the connections from it because I'm going to need to do that anyway to rewire it to connect to the crossover. So I'll do that and that's just, it's one nice thing to be soldered to everything else. Okay, so let's desolder these three connections, which are just two speaker connections in there. There we go. Yeah, that's two those to remove, and then just remove the earth as well, just disconnect it. So I've tried to remove the earth connection and it's completely stuck. It just soldered on far too tightly there, so I'm just going to have to leave that connected and just carefully move the speaker out. Don't know why it's connected so tightly. But yeah, I think it's more maybe crimped underneath, I don't know. So I'll shift that out of the way and then just figure out a way to have this safely out of the inside of the machine. So now all the components are precariously balanced over here, I can now remove the front panel, so the wood. So it's held with a few screws around the outside, so if I undo those screws, hopefully it'll then just pop out. So one in here. Get these all out. My only concern is I don't really know how the mesh is attached, so if that's like glued or something, that's going to be a complete nightmare to get off. And then to reattach that's not easy either. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so I've now removed all those screws from around this wooden panel, so hopefully if I press down it will come out and I can somehow slide it out from under the machine, despite the fact there's a bunch of components balanced on top of the machine. So that's not going to be particularly easy, but hopefully I can manage it. So let's see if we carefully tilt this up. Oh, that's released it, so it's conscious of all the bits that are balanced over here, don't knock them all off. Let's see, very carefully try and, there we go. Okay, so the front wooden panel is now detached, so hopefully I can carefully slide it out from underneath to clear enough space for it. Oh, there we go. That's successful, that has now been removed. Okay, so I now have the front panel here removed, um, and as we can see here, it's stapled on. So there's all these staples going inside. They've used absolutely tons of staples. So what I'm now going to have to do is unpick all of those and then hopefully the actual materials will just come off fairly easily and I'll just need to somehow work out how to staple it back on afterwards. Despite not owning a staple gun, so it's either going to involve hammering the staples back in if I can get them out cleanly or running to the shops and buying a staple gun. So yeah, time to get those removed and then we can get on with the mounting the tweeter. Okay, so now I've finally finished removing the world's supply of staples from this. There's an absolutely ridiculous number of them. Um, and I think they're actually some of them are glued in because when you try to ping them off the screwdriver there's like little bits of glue flicking off each screw. So that was not particularly fun to remove, but they're all out now. And I can now remove the front cover, so that just lifts off. And yeah, that's the material there. I'm going to try and not flex it too much because it might be a bit brittle, it might snap. But yeah, that's the old grill, so that's now removed. All we can now see is the inside. So we can see there's the, basically the big bit of wood, it's almost the MDF I think. And yeah, it's got a sort of raised edge that mounts the mesh over. There's a the hole for the existing speaker, and I'll be installing and drilling a new one up here. And you can see what I said earlier about on, in the sort of teardown video about the logo. It literally is just a bit of card, or I don't know, it's just even paper, just stapled onto it. Um, but yeah, so now what I need to do is drill a big hole up here and mount the tweeter in it. I'm sure people that know me personally are probably screaming at their screens right now telling me to stop and don't touch the drill, given that I am fairly accident prone. I cut my finger yesterday on a, using a screwdriver, so yeah, I'm not that the, I'm not the sort of safest person in the world, but we're going to try this anyway. So I've got a hole saw. This is a 51 mil hole saw. The speaker says it needs um, a 45 mil cutout, so this is the closest I have to that, and that's still small. It's still small enough that it's not going to get in the way of the screw holes. And I've worked out here the centre point between the main speaker and the outside, along like lined up along the diagonal exactly, and that's here. So if I drill a hole here. That should mount the tweeter in a sort of nice, sort of central position on this on the device. So yeah, time to get drilling.
and hopefully I come out with 10 fingers. This has not gone well. <laughs> um, the video's taken a slight turn. Um, I went to put the drill together and went... The drill I bought doesn't fit the chuck arbor for the hole saw. Well that's very handy. Um, I mean thankfully I did just literally buy the drill the other day to, for this project so I've not actually used it. So now we're going to test B&Q's return policy and try and get a drill that will actually fit the bloody chuck arbor. <sighs> Fun. So yep, time to go to B&Q. I'm now en route to B&Q. Also is this a vlog? Am I technically vlogging right now? I don't know. This is a complete pain but hopefully I'll get the right drill eventually. Okay, so I've finally made it to B&Q. Now we get to test our customer service to see if they'll actually accept a return on that drill or not. Better do, because I don't want to lose all that money. Great success, I got a refund, so now find a new drill. I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> I just need something to make a hole in some wood. Okay, so I think I finally got a new drill. Hopefully this will work. It says 13mm chuck size, so hopefully that'll fit the thing, because it almost fit in the last one, which was 10mm, so yeah, I hope it'll fit this time. Right, so after a two hour round trip to B&Q, I finally have a drill that hopefully I'll be able to fit that hole saw in so I can drill that single hole. <laughs> that has taken far too long and it's also cost an absolute fortune. But now I have a drill, so we quick unboxing video. Where I probably can't fit out yet in the damn thing. That's helpful. Right, how do you do this? There we go, and let's see. Now I'm really hoping this... There. Now I'm really hoping this comes, comes charged, or at least have a decent charge level in it, because if it's dead, I'm gonna have to charge it, and then it's not, there's not gonna be any daylight left to film outside. Hooray, and a usefully zip tied. The Zip things together for some reason. So now these pliers. There. This is not working, going well, is it? There we go. Okay, that's that. Now this better work because I've had to rip the box to get it open, so I probably can't return this one. Okay, so what do we have? We have a manual, not got time to read that. Hopefully, I won't die doing it. There's a drill. It's a drill that's in the bag. That hole looks bigger, so hopefully that'll fit. There we go. Moment of truth, will the arbor fit the drill? Yes. Problem has been solved. <laughs> Thank God, if that hadn't happened, I would, you'd have probably seen the first video where like, I go absolutely mental and like, just start throwing things around. Cardboard. Battery charger. Battery. Also, speaking of batteries, there was a, there was a, a very close call that almost resulted in a complete tantrum where I almost bought a drill without a battery because they sold one that didn't have a battery in the box and I got halfway to check out before I realised that there wasn't a battery. And if I'd got home, taken it out and found there wasn't a battery with it, <laughs> that would not have ended in a happy thing, would it? Because I'd have probably screamed quite a bit. Right, let's see if this works. Battery into the drill. Yeah. Good. Okay, so I can finally assemble the hole saw. So, loosen that bit off there. As you can tell, I'm not an expert when it comes to power tools, <laughs> given that I didn't realise there were different chuck sizes and then therefore bought a drill with a 10mm chuck and then bought a hole saw with a differently, with a 13mm arbor thing. So, let's try and figure out why this won't line up. There we go, push that through and screw that on. Okay. Now we watch as this actually does fit the drill this time. If that hadn't, <laughs> the drill would have probably gone out the window at that point. And there we go, that's in there. And now hopefully, that works. Cool. So now let's go outside and make that, put that, finally put that hole in the front of the Coomber. Okay, so now outside with the front of the Coomber on top of a cardboard box, which is completely not how you're meant to do this. So hopefully I don't die, but let's see. So that'll hopefully work. We can finally drill this hole in it. In the centre. Here we go, here we go. Ooh. 
Ooh. That went through. Okay, that's slightly more dramatic than expected. It's very, very tough with this. But finally, there's no hole in it. <laughs> that was a bit ridiculous. I'm trying to get that rid of all that crap that it's accumulated. And there we go. That is a hole. That was well worth the two hours to be in cube, wasn't it? And 70 quid for a drill. Yep, finally done it. And with that, we now have a hole in the front of the coomber, and I still have all my fingers, which is good. Slight fight with the hole saw there when it sort of jump, jumped and then got stuck, I didn't really know what to expect, but yeah, I got through it eventually. I've also cut a little nick out the top and bottom to cut to fit the terminals on the speaker, because the diameter of the hole is enough to fit the, fit the magnet, but not the terminals. So, slight adjustment there, and the tweeter fits perfectly. So all I need to do now is solder some wires onto those terminals before I put it in, and then I can feed it through, screw it in, and get on with mounting the rest of the equipment. So I'm now ready to solder some wire onto the speaker because I won't be able to solder it when it's in the hole. So I'm just going to use this old speaker wire. It's pretty decent, it's copper and stuff. I've got absolute bales of this from when I removed it from my old flat, so may as well use it. And then I'm going to wire it up. Now one thing I'm actually going to do is probably going to look slightly wrong to everyone because I'm going to use the one with the, the wire with the stripe on it as the positive. In every setup when you're doing this properly, that should be the negative. But throughout the Coomber, they've used it the wrong way around. All the positive stuff in the Coomber has the stripe on it. So I'm going to do it that way, just so it's consistent at least. So I don't need to remember this part of it is wired the right, right way around, the other parts that are the wrong way around. I may as well just do it correctly for the whole thing. I'll do it incorrectly for the whole thing. At least keep it consistent. So yeah, that's why I'm doing that. So let's just strip this wire. And solder it onto that speaker. The other end of this will be soldered directly onto my crossover. Which I'll also try and mount to the back panel inside the machine. Let's twist that, and just try and do that so. The positive terminal is the larger one, I'm pretty sure it is anyway because when it came out of the box it had a sort of red red ink on it, which I've taken off, um, so that's going to be positive on the top, and then negative on the bottom. Just, just that, put that through the hole, fill it, and then we can solder it. There we go, that's positive side connected hopefully. Yep, that's worked, that's strong. Now for the other side. Same same deal really. Just I'm trying to feed it through from the inside of the connector rather than put, doing it on the outside because there's not a huge gap with that little notch I've cut out, so I'd rather have to speak the wire on the inside just to make it as small diameter as possible to fit through the hole. There we go. Okay, through. Now all I need to do is solder that one. There we go. That's the second half now connected. So what I can now do is get this mounted in the machine. Okay, so let's put the speaker in. Fit it in this way. I'm actually using the battery mount from the Coomber just to sort of prop this up so that I don't accidentally screw into the table or something stupid because no Malachi would manage to do that. So that's the sweeter now installed there. And I'm just going to install it with these four self-tapping screws. They're not ideal because they do actually slightly, they don't fit perfectly into the little recess so they will stick out a little bit. But it's got the grill covering it so it's not going to be too bad. So let's just put that in there and hopefully be able to screw all these in without causing any problems. Let's just line all that up. And here we go. One more, and it will have a tweeter installed. And there we go. That tweeter is now installed in the machine. Looks pretty neat from the front and from the back. That's absolutely fine. 
Cool. So what I'll need to do is I'm just going to use just a Sharpie and just colour these screw heads black. Um, I'm also going to do it with these two mounts here that will help the transformer. Um, the paint on these obviously come off so you can sort of see it through the front and I'd rather not see the big front, the big silver screws here through the front as well. So if I coloured them black you won't see, it as, see them as clearly. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is mount the crossover. So I'm just going to use the same self-tapping screws as before. It's not very complicated so I don't need to worry about really standoffs I don't think. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a few holes in this to be able to mount it through. So I'm going to try and just use the drill. I've tried an off cut and it seemed to work okay, so hopefully it'll be fine. Um, also you can admire my incredibly straight cut there, which kind of went wrong halfway through. <laughs> so it's not completely square now annoyingly, but oh well. So I'll try and do a hole here and just do a few. I'll try and do four, if not I'll maybe just get a couple. It's not a huge, like expensive or fragile or anything, so it, it shouldn't be too hard to do, so. Maybe we'll put one there, it's probably sensible. Yeah, a bit close to the wire, that'll do. Cool, so here we go. I'm going to go relatively slowly here because I don't like burst the bottom of the board out because then I can risk taking tracks off. There we go, that is now a hole to the board. Doesn't look too bad, the back is slightly damaged but nothing major, and the front looks fine. So I just need to do it a few more times and then we can mount it in the Coomber. Okay, so I've now drilled a few holes in the crossover, just four of them all the way around. They seem okay, they're not obviously not the neatest things ever on the bottom, but I don't know how you meant to mount this, probably not drill through with a big drill, but it works. I also just snipped the corner off here just because it comes quite close to where the speaker goes, and I also don't want to go and put that in and find it hits it, so that corner being cut off there should hopefully just skirt around that. So I'm going to sort of mount it around about there, being careful because obviously you've got the lip from the coomber as well where the wood mounts. So sort of there seems reasonable. I'm just going to use more self-tapping screws. It's not perfect but it'll at least do. I'm also going to use some washers um, just to space the screw out a little bit further away because the last thing I want to do is, a, is have the screw to pop out and burst out through the front of the machine where you'll see it. So I'll just put a washer around each screw just to give it a little bit less depth into the wood. So yeah, let's get that done. So take the washer, take the screw, and try and screw it through. So first. That seems okay, it'll actually get a little bit looser. Um, just because I don't end up snapping the Vero board because it's not the strongest thing in the world. So we'll do that there, do the other ones, and then we'll have this the crossover mounted. So I've now mounted the crossover and wired the tweeter up to it. So what I need to do now is wire up the input to the, the crossover as well as the output for the mid-range and low frequency driver. However, as I mentioned earlier, that's going to go through a switch, so I'll need to do that. Um, I'm not going to bother filming it just because otherwise I'll be here all day trying to do that. So I'm going to wire all that up and then I'll come back once it's all done to show how it's all going to work. Okay, so everything's now wired up and ready to go back together. So you can see we still got the tweeter and crossover here connected together, but I've attached these extra two wires that go up to this connector. This connector will provide the audio signal to the crossover as well as connecting up the main speaker through the crossover as well to let me use that switch. Speaking of the switch, here it is. So that's the switch I've made there. I've wired it up so depending on what way you have it, if you have it one way it will just link the built the original speaker directly to the amplifier and if you switch it the other way it will link the original speaker up to the amplifier via the crossover enabling the tweeter as well. So you see there the red and black wires that just does the link directly between the two between the amplifier and the speaker and then the rest of the wires all go off to this connector that will ultimately connect to the crossover. So all we need to do is have these two connected together and that will all work. Which yeah, there we go. That connects together and that will link everything up and this can mount on the back panel. And having the connector means I can easily disconnect it if I want to remove the back panel. The back panel doesn't end up sort of soldered into other bits inside the machine. All we then have is this wire that's not connected. That's going to go onto the original speaker. And then there's one terminal here that's also not got a wire in it. 
the connect the wire that goes that currently goes to the original speaker will go into here to connect the amplifier up. So yeah, that's all ready to go. So the next step is to get that original mesh put back on the front of this, which isn't going to be overly fun because it was all stapled and I've not got a staple gun. So we're going to have a fun session of trying to use a hammer to put some staples back in. But we'll try and get that back on and put it all back together. And after a lot of fiddling, I've finally been able to put all the staples back in. Well, not all of them. I've left a few out just because there was way more than it really needed and it was going to take ages to put them all in. And some, some are a bit bent when I tried to hammer them back in. But yep, they're all back in. I had to hammer them all in rather than use a staple gun because I don't have one. And I didn't really fancy another trip to B&Q to go and get one, so I just hammered them back in. Seems to be enough. As long, I mean, as long as it's not got like a massive oak, like flaps hanging out at the side, stop it going back into the casing, it should be fine. And once it's in the casing, I'll sort of press up against it and stop the staples popping out. So it should be absolutely fine. I wouldn't be too worried about it. So the next step is now mount this back into the Coomber's case, screw it in, and mount the rest of the components. That's relatively painless. Top of the machine just slipped over that absolutely fine without catching on the mesh, which is good. And yeah, it seems to fit in there, fit in there quite well. The good thing is also the antenna isn't caught on the speaker, there's plenty of clearance between that, which was my main concern when I was choosing tweeters because I couldn't go for any sort of horn type thing because it would come far too far into the machine that would hit off the antenna. So that's good, there's like probably about 5 mils clearance, which is absolutely fine. So yeah, that moves absolutely fine over that. So that was my main concern with this and that, is absolutely, that isn't a problem, so that's great. So the next thing to do is going to be mount the original speaker back in as well as the transformer and start putting it back together. Just a quick update on this rat's nest of wires. Um, I've wired it up a little bit more. I, I apologise for not showing this all on camera, but it would just take hours if I was trying to film everything because there's a lot of bits more bits to go back in here. So that's connected there all ready to go. And I've also now wired in this grey wire that goes up to this board here. So that's the output of the amplifier. It's now also going to the speaker that goes to that switch, the connector that goes to that switch. I've also mounted the speaker in as along with the transformer, so all that's ready to go. So all I really need to put in now is remount all the amplifier and sort of knobs and input assembly up here. And once that's done, we should be good to go. Well, I'm going to leave the microphone out and then we'll replace the batteries because we've still got to do that. And once the battery has been, have been replaced, we should be good to go. Oh, well, tape mechanism has to go back in as well. Not too much more to do anyway. So yeah, let's keep going. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is replace these batteries. So these are the old two batteries and here are the new ones. However, there's a slight problem. Although they are of effectively the same size of battery, the new ones are slightly wider, so they don't fit in this wooden thing. I mean, well, they fit, they fit lengthwise, but depthwise, it's just a little bit too. They're just a, bit, a little bit too thick, so they don't quite sit down into that. So I'll need to cut, like, sort of cut a bit of that wood off to make it fit. So time to go and do that. And after much battling with every tool I had, I was finally able to sort of cut a bit of the bottom. Incredibly messy, but it works. This is like really sort of solid plywood and it, it just seemed impossible to cut. Like I had to go at it with a file, a hacksaw, everything and finally sort of got just enough of it, enough of it cut out so the batteries do now fit in. So that's good and it's not like loose on the batteries at all but it's also not, not sort of squeezing them so that's actually the perfect fit, which is good. So now all we need to do is mount the batteries back in the Coomber. Okay, so I've now mounted that wood back in along with one half of the metal thing and now we can try and put the batteries in and see if they work. So. Take a little protecting tabs off first before I lose them. Well, before I forget to take them off. There we go. And just chuck these in. So, the original went in, the original ones had the negative on the left, so I'll just do that so the wires are the right length. Put it under there, and slide it in. Now hopefully, the height's correct. Yep, so the height's absolutely fine under those brackets, it was just the depth that was a problem. So, there we go, and just do like that one there. Oh, that's a bit tight there. There we go, that's in. So that's both batteries now installed, so we'll connect the terminals up and we'll just quickly try and fire the machine up and see if it runs. Hopefully it will. So if my memory serves me correctly, the yellow is positive on this battery and, and the grey is the pairing to that for negative. And then on this battery it's just red and black like you'd expect. So that's fairly simple. And black goes on there. So now that's connected. Well, it's not connected yet, but now that's connected. Hopefully, if I switch the switch on on the side of the Coomber, it should fire up. Um, I'll switch, plug the little switch thing in as well, just so it's actually got the speaker connected. And in theory, this will actually turn on. Yep, that's fired up. Um, see on the side there, the 
red battery okay lights come on. So also those batteries must be sort of charged as well. So that's pretty awesome. So all I need to do now is turn off is put the other half of this metal bracket on, mount the radio mic board, which is here, remount that, and then figure out a way to mount this toggle switch on the back of the case. And then we should be ready, we should be done. So the machine is now reassembled, and microphone board's in, batteries are in, and everything seems to work, which is good. So, I've also now got this connector here, that's the new one I've put in that's going to go to the switch on the back panel. I've also got plenty of connectors on here free, and um, that'll be used for other things that I might mount to the back panel in the future. So there's plenty of connections on there and it's all keyed so I can only insert it the correct way around. Which is why I went for the sort of 20 pin ATX sort of connector, just because it's keyed, it's simple and it was cheap. So yeah, that's there. So all I need to do is figure out where, how I'm going to mount the switch on the back panel. I need it to sort of be out of the way, I don't want to sort of be in the middle because I want to knock it easily and you know, accidentally switch it. So I'm thinking that I'll probably put it up in this top right corner because there's a decent gap here between it and the board. It can't really sit here because it'll hit the board, but if it's over here, it'll just sort of keep it a little bit out of the way and it can sort of fit in here which means I'll be mounting it through this hole on the case, the top right hole there unfortunately the hole is slightly too narrow for the toggle switch to fit through so I'm just going to very slightly widen that out with a drill or just a drill bit anyway just to slightly widen it fit the switch in and hopefully it'll be fine so yeah time to do that fit the switch, get it back on and fire it up ok so now let's widen this hole out and mount the toggle switch so Put a drill in, just hopefully that'll... Should be fairly easy to go through this wood, it's very weak wood. There we go, that's now a slightly wider hole. And now hopefully, that will be wide enough to mount the toggle switch. So here's a switch here, see if that fits through. Nope, it needs to be slightly wider. I think I've actually like drilled at the exact diameter of the switch rather than making it bigger so it fits through. So, time to draw a slightly bigger hole. Okay, that previous bit I tried was 5mm, so I'll try 6mm, hopefully that'll be enough. Okay, so that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? Let's tidy that up a wee bit. Paint's flaked off a little bit, but I'll just try and cut, I'll colour that in with a sharpie just to make it look a little bit less obvious. But now, if that switch goes in... Still doesn't quite fit. Hmm. If I just shove it through. Yeah, a bit brute force seems to help this. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, wind, I'll wind the hole out slightly and hopefully the switch will then fit. Now. Very close. Okay, so I now have the switch mounted there. Fairly neat, and it's sort of fixed so it won't actually accidentally rotate, so it's reasonably sort of solid. So all I need to do is connect this connector up to the one inside the machine, mount the back, and it should be good to go. So hopefully this connector is relatively easy to deal with, so if I just mount that on there. Then that can probably just be tucked down inside the machine a bit. And then at the back will just go on. I can carefully sort of route these wires. I'll probably zip tie those wires there. And if I just do that, there we go. That mounts quite nicely. So you see there, back's now mounted, and there's my little switch, which I deliberately mounted right in the corner so it sort of gets quite close to the edge here. So the machine was sort of knocked onto its back or something that wouldn't accidentally get pressed as easily. Yeah, that's installed. So now it's time to screw the back on and see it running. And with that, the modifications are now complete. So let's take a look at what we have. So on the front, we can see we have the new tweeter under here. It's a bit hard to make out, but it's it's there. And now if you look on the back, we can see that new switch I've added, which is located up here. So I've labeled it speaker config, and it just lets me switch between one-way and two-way. So one-way is what the, what the machine was originally. It just feeds the output of the amplifier directly into the original speaker. If you switch it over to two-way, it then feeds the output of the amplifier into the crossover, and the output of the crossover into the tweeter and the original speaker. So it just lets you really sort of just switch between to hearing what it used to sound like and what it sounds like now. Although it might also be handy to have, say, the crossover failed or something due to my dodgy electronics or whatever, and that caused a problem, you can then switch it back over to one way and keep the machine running. So it's just got that, it's a bit of fun really, just so I can really demonstrate <laughs> the improvement. And then on the other side we can see we've now got the battery. 
batteries installed and they're now working. So you can see down here, we have the battery charging circuit here. If we switch the machine on, you can see the charging light comes on. And that now says it's charging, so that didn't happen before, so the charging is at least working. And if we switch the mains off, you can see the charging light goes off. And now if we turn it on to battery power, it turns on and the battery light comes on to say battery OK. So it's all working. So I suppose the final thing is to listen to, it, to listen to it and see how it sounds with the modifications done. OK, so we're now ready to listen to it going. So I'm going to plug my phone into the top of it and we're going to listen to it going. Also just to prove a point, it is running on battery power currently. There's no not plugged in, but we can still switch it on and it'll run. So this just just proves that the batteries work. <laughs> so that's all wired up there and it starts the music going and listen to it going. So what you're listening to now is it without the modification. So now let's switch the modification on, i.e. the tweeter on. Let's turn it off, off again. And on again. So hopefully you can tell that on camera, but the tweeter makes such a difference in sound, it sounds so much better. So one thing I found is when you're using the tweeter, you sort of need to tre turn the treble down a little bit and turn the bass up a little bit just to compensate because I think the tweeter's slightly louder than everything else. But it sounds absolutely fine once you do that. So what, And also beforehand you sort of had to tweak the treble and bass as well just to get it sounding quite right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the same track and switch between it on the old speaker configuration and the new one. But with the bass and treble controls optimised for that so each configuration will be set to sound the best it possibly can. So we'll do that and you can sort of hear how it sounds. So hopefully you can tell the difference in audio quality from the video there, obviously I don't know how well it came out on the camera, but it definitely makes a huge difference to when, I, like, when I'm listening to it. The best way I can sort of describe it is like the difference between going between AM and FM radio. The old speaker just sounds a lot flatter, there's less high frequencies and it just sounds a lot more less exciting and then when you switch the tweeter on you can just hear so much more and everything just sounds a lot brighter and clearer. Especially vocals if you've got sort of music where there's like vocals along with like low frequency stuff or sort of electronic music where you've got high frequencies and low frequencies on the same thing, like it, it just clears that up and makes it sound so much better. So there you have it. That was a look at some upgrades I've done to this old Coomber PA system. Definitely sounds a lot better with that new tweeter installed, and now it's got working batteries, I can actually use it on battery power, which is great. So, yep, thanks for watching, and stand by for a future video where I do more upgrades to this coming soon. Thanks for watching.